I invite anyone who's out there in the diaspora who's afraid to come, you know, ignore all the things that you see in the media. There is so much love here. It is an exciting place. It's vibrant. There's always a vibe. So, you know, I, I would encourage everyone to come. And most important of all, land appreciates here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another episode of The Lawyer's Corner, all right? Yes. <laughs> so we have promised you some episodes in relation to speaking to a lawyer or to different lawyers to get information on land-related matters, acquisition, um, acquiring land, building in Jamaica while you're living overseas. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the lawyer's corner and we have Miss Christabel Masazi with us today. Right? Did yes. I pronounce it right? Very right. Okay. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have Miss Christabel introduce herself. We're gonna get some information on, on you and mm -hmm. basically introduce you to the channel to our family because as a Jawi TV overall, we have built a community that we're proud of. We're going about 6,000 strong now. So wow, that's really impressive. We just want to introduce you to them, mm. um, you yourself as a returning resident, right? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Christabel Musazi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jawi, for having me. I, this is a very exciting thing for me. Yeah. Um, I am a proprietor managing partner of Nankunda and Associates. We are a conveyancing firm. We have been in business for the last eight years, um, doing strictly conveyancing, estate matters, all things connected to land. Mm -hmm. I myself moved back, moved to Jamaica 20 years ago. It has been a very exciting journey. I invite anyone who's out there in the diaspora who's afraid to come you know, ignore all the things that you see in the media. There is so much love here. It is an exciting place. It's vibrant. There's always a vibe. So, you know, I, I would encourage everyone to come. And most important of all, land appreciates here. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, you couldn't have said it better. Land mm -hmm. appreciates. But here's a question that I know most of our followers, most of our subscribers will, will ask. The name sounds foreign, okay. one, mm -hmm. and the accent. Yes. So, so let me just ask for them. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the background, your background. All right. So, 20 years ago, in 2003, I came here for a short visit, all right? Um, was supposed to be here for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Met a young gentleman. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> And the rest is history. Well, I moved here. He encouraged me to move here. Uh, we moved to Montego Bay, had our children. We're currently in Kingston. But, you know, it, it, it's an enchanting island, to be mm -hmm. honest. So it, it, it drew me in. I thought I'd be here. I said, well, two years. And the two years have turned into 20 years. So, nice. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> So tell me, where were you originally from? Are you well, born? No, I'm originally from Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, I have a sister also, um, also in law, who had been here by then for 12 years. So I came to visit her and met my husband here. Nice. Yeah. So the, tell, me, tell me a little bit about the transition um, from Uganda to Jamaica, one and mm -hmm. two. How do you feel about that transition? Do you miss back home? Well, um, after 20 years, this is home. Yes. But not to say that I, there's some aspects I don't miss. I, of course, miss um, my friends, my family. I will tell you, though, that now the food, uh, I'm so used to Jamaican food when I go home. I'm thinking, you know, I'm missing uh, Jamaican food. So um, I, I, when I've been asked this question before, and the one thing that I say is, you know, you're asking me 20 years too late. Maybe I should have been asked this five years ago. <laughs> yeah. But it, it has been a smooth tra transition. Mm. Not that it hasn't had challenges, but I... I, I have enjoyed it and I think for me what I find um, 
that I like the best is that Jamaican people are genuinely welcoming. Mm -hmm. They will help you to transition. You know, people will help you uh, to integrate into the society, which, uh, which for me, you know, has made it a smooth transition. Yeah. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So basically, you are speaking from the standpoint of you actually being a resident returning because even though you're from Uganda, yeah. you made Jamaica your home. So exactly. You transition back home to Jamaica. Yes. So that's kind of an interesting story to tell. Yeah. And from that standpoint, I know that you know it will be even more interesting to all subscribers. Exactly. Additionally, mm -hmm. your profession. Tell me a little bit about your profession. All right. Um, I have. I don't want to say a double major, but I, I, have, I wear two hats. Mm -hmm. I am a realtor and I am also a conveyancing attorney. All right. So in my work, I have worked with my major clients are from the US, mm -hmm. Canada and um, United Kingdom. So the work that I do, I help people um, find houses. All right. And then I also help them through the legal process of actually putting the house in your name oh, all right okay. tell me tell me more about that i mean what's 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 that process like as it relates to getting the house in your name being that you're not here are there any specific um process that you take your customers through okay what i actually have i have a checklist it's called a thing called steps to buying a house in jamaica mm -hmm. all right so um the first thing that i find that many people who are overseas don't have is a trn which is mm -hmm. the tax reference number yeah. all right so we can help you get a tax reference number because the first thing that's going to happen if you when you put in an offer on a property they're mm -hmm. going to ask you for your tax reference number any transaction you want, when it, whether it's an agreement for sale, any business that you're going to do in Jamaica, you need a tax reference number, mm -hmm. all right? So that's the first step. After that, um, when you have identified a property, you put in your offer, um, the next thing is you get an attorney, okay? Best you get a conveyancing attorney so that mm -hmm. they know exactly what the process is going to be. And the conveyancing attorney will liars with the vendor's attorney who will send an agreement for sale all right oh, okay. the agreement for sale um is what will require you to have your tax reference number and it will have different clauses mm -hmm. regarding your understanding between the two of you the terms oh, all right okay. so i would look through to make sure one that you're covered and that you do not lose your money mm -hmm. okay uh, you would be required to pay a deposit okay you would also need to make sure that the land doesn't have any problems, that it ha doesn't have a caveat or a mortgage. So there are many things that we have to look through. Mm -hmm. We also always say that you need to go get a surveyor, yeah. okay, to make sure that what is on the title is it's actually, actually what, what is, is on the yeah. land. What so is there, pegged. What is pegged, exactly. Yeah. So there are many different things. As you can imagine, I cannot go through the whole process <laughs> because it is, it's a process yeah. that takes us around three months. Yeah. So I cannot compress it in 10 minutes. But okay. it just shows you that you really need an attorney to take you through. No. Well, my question is, are all attorneys the same? Because you mentioned um, conveyancing. Yes. Hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Yeah. <laughs> um, a convert, con conveyancing, yes. conveyancing yeah. attorney. Is there a different, are, are there different types of attorney? All right. Let me tell you. Uh, a criminal lawyer or say a civil lawyer, their main task is to go to court. The mm -hmm. criminal lawyer goes and defends criminals. Mm -hmm. The civil lawyer, if you are in a civil matter, civil matter yeah. would, would, would um, defend you. So because you've spent a lot of time doing one particular area, you gain more experience, more, uh, more experience yeah. in that area. So that's what happens. If you are doing conveyancing, real estate matters, you get to know the different uh, traps and the different nuances. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, increase in your skill. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like riding a bike. It's so exactly. the more you do that particular area, the more you would know the pitfalls, know what to avoid. Exactly. Basically, right? Exactly. Oh, okay. Um, the, the interesting thing is most people think that they can just purchase a property off the bat 
<laughs> you make me laugh. <laughs> Um, how important is it um, to get a lawyer, and in particular, a conveyancing lawyer? It, you know, it is critical. Mm -hmm. I have seen so many people um, go it by themselves, and they come back to you to do the correction. I think I remember one particular client who um, had been told by the bank and the developer who they bought from that you don't need to go use a lawyer. And what happened is that they paid, say, around 40%. 40%. 40%. It was a cash sale. They paid 40% of the purchase price. And then they got stuck. Uh, the bank could not give them a mortgage. They didn't have the cash. And they lost the 40%. They came to me. It took them, they came to me with that problem, and it took them maybe around four to five years to get part of their money. So, wow. and, and, and you know, when you listen to them, you're thinking you are trying to save around 3% of the yeah. purchase price, which is <laughs> typically what no, the I lawyers mean, charge, um, and you lost 40%. Yes, yeah, so, we have a saying here that says, Pennywise and Pound Foolish. foolish yeah. um, I mean, it's a no-brainer. And it's a big investment. Exactly, so exactly. You can't look at it as an expense. You have to look at it as an investment. An investment, yeah. Right? So let's, let's talk about acquisition okay. or the process of acquisition. Yeah. Um, and some of the cases that you've seen mm. um, where one, it has gone good, mm -hmm. and two, it has, it has gone, gone bad. bad. <laughs> Okay. Because I know um, there are situations where people lose their money. Yes. What is really land acquisition? Okay. Um, land acquisition can take different forms. All right. The typical one we're talking about is you go, you find a property, you purchase it. All right. We also have different ones that I'm not going to get into. Adverse possession where mm -hmm. you have been living on a land, a piece of land for over 12 years and you acquire it, all right? That's a long process. I think mm -hmm. that will be for, for another day, <laughs> yeah. all right? But the typical thing is you find land, you find a, you're a willing purchaser, mm -hmm. you find a willing seller. seller, and you enter an agreement and proceed to buy the property, all okay. right? So we know that that yes. is the acquisition okay. process. That is the acquisition now, process. Now, how important is it that you, if, is it for you to have a lawyer and okay. what is the process to really get a lawyer involved because most of the times what happens is that a lot of people are afraid mm -hmm. they think it's what, what you say um they're a little bit afraid to approach a lawyer okay. meaning they think that they're gonna pay this hefty sum okay for a lawyer well um it is not a hefty sum first of all the market determines the price mm -hmm. and in Jamaica it is a percentage of the purchase price mm -hmm. all right um, typically that is between two and three percent so it is not back breaking especially considering the investment that you're putting in mm -hmm. all right so the thing to do is as, as I said before look for a conveyancing attorney someone who has experience in this mat in these issues and think of it as an investment mm -hmm. all right so how do I get a lawyer? Get the lawyer involved. Is it that I just reach out to you and say, "Hey, I want to purchase a land. Mm -hmm. How much must I pay you?" Mm -hmm. As opposed to as opposed yeah. to us me sending you the land documents and you will you know calculate whatever it is to, to and, and then quote me. Is is that the process? Because most of the time we don't know what the process is. Okay. Well, let me tell you. Well, the way it happens with me is that someone refers the work to me. Mm -hmm. But someone approaches you and they tell you that they have this land and they tell you the price, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I do, I give them a pro forma, a breakdown of my fees, the government fees, and all the other fees involved so that you have an idea of, you know, what it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, um, they don't know what the cost is and they also don't know the process. So in addition to giving them that steps mm -hmm. i also give them a performance so that you have a clear idea of all the fees my fees the government fees and then after that um 
I will, mm -hmm. uh, will ask them to get the vendor's attorney to get in touch with me so that they can send me the agreement for sale. And I'll also be able to look through all the documents, the title, the um, do a caveat search, very important, yeah. because you know you may be going through this and you don't know that for some reason the person cannot even complete the transaction. Maybe yeah. some family members have said this is not their land. So yeah. those are really the first steps. So in some cases, mm -hmm. um, there are covenants on properties that, that states that it's family land exactly. and can't be sold for it, some reason. Exactly. So you have to research those things. Yeah. Or even the government can actually put um, a stop, on, what, what do you call it, a lien on your, on your property if they did something on your property, say there was a breach before yeah, and they came and knocked it down, they may put a lien on it to say whoever is going to purchase this property has to pay for those um, actions also, okay. that they took at that point. So yeah. it's very important, right? And also you had asked about um, times when things have uh, gone wrong gone yeah. wrong like for example i know of a particular matter some years ago where there was a caveat and the caveat had been put on by a spouse mm -hmm. who had gotten divorced so it was a caveat telling saying they could not sell the land and this spouse had died oh. so it was very difficult to, to do the registration wow because in typical cases the person is supposed to allow you to sell yeah. but now they're not there yeah. so and the person had died in the US trying to get a death certificate for that person was was extremely difficult because on top of that your my client the other person sorry was now divorced so they mm -hmm. couldn't they didn't even have the right to get the death certificate yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of a, a sticky situation yeah all right so what are some of the some of the um, rescue situations that you found? Right? Strange situations where it turned out good, but it was a, was bad at, at the start. All right, um, there's one particular thing people don't talk about, and um, when you're buying property, especially if you're buying a house, mm -hmm. make sure that one of the conditions says that the place is vacant, mm -hmm. that you'll get vacant possession. It is a small condition that people overlook. So, you know, so if you are unlucky and the vendor's attorney slips it in occupied and the place, you take the place occupied, it is very difficult to, to get, get tenants out who wow. do not want to get out in Jamaica. You have to go to court. Getting a court date is not very easy okay yeah. sometimes it can take months so imagine the, the 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 sticky situations are where people have started paying the mortgage mm -hmm. and, they they, and the and you can't access your property yeah and the tenant is there and the tenants know their rights so they're going to tell you take me to court <laughs> and the court is gonna say you have to give them time to, but, find, to find a date you know and then it's a whole long process so i i i know of matters where it's taken six months you're trying to get out the tenant so wow. it's very important that you always say you know unless you're willing to take the risk sometimes if you're getting a good deal you say you know one thing all right i will pay the mortgage i got a good deal mm -hmm. i will be uh, i'll cover that expense for the six months when the tenants are in and i will fight and get the tenants out all right it's almost like buying properties by auction when you yeah. buy properties by auction you know that you're taking that risk but you've gotten a good deal. Yeah. But if it's not a good deal, make sure that the place is vacant. Food for thought. Food for thought. Um, I'm going to give you a situation and you tell me what you think about it. Okay. So my wife and I was doing some search the other day and we saw a property mm. um, for sale. <clears throat> and the person stated that there is no title. Mm? <laughs> Red flag for me. Red flag. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is no title. Yeah. And it's the the property ha, is what capture land and there are people on it but they are selling it what are your thoughts on that okay who is selling it the people who captured it or he the person you spoke to was selling well it's it was advertised actually oh, okay 
um, we were online searching for properties and we saw where there is a property, I can't remember exactly where, and it's, it's for sale, but they're saying that people are on the property and they, they themselves don't have a title, but they're selling it as is. Okay, all right. First of all, you need to do a lot of, we call it due diligence, mm -hmm. but you really need to investigate. The first thing is the people on the land. If they've been there for over 12 years, forget about forget it. Forget about <laughs> it. All right. Okay. Forget about it. It is theirs. They will. They have rights of through adverse possession. Adverse possession. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, um, <clears throat> it is also not very um, wise to buy land that is that contentious. All yeah. right. You don't know, you, uh, aside from legal trouble, you could face, you know, other troubles that we do yeah. not want to talk about here. But the truth of the matter That's is the first that, thing that, that is the first about. thing, all right? Um, that here is, <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, how am I going to get people off this property that they've been living on? And if I was to go there and tell these people to move off of their property, Problems are exactly, gonna... exactly, and you know what? I uh, and, and you see, the, the person who is selling it is smart because they're telling you buy it as is. Yeah, he has a problem that he's trying to, to, get, rid to get rid of. So he's saying, yeah. Oh, you know, one thing, Andre, Andre looks like, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a hot potato, uh, yeah. hot potato, and, and who's gonna catch who's it? Going to catch it? <laughs> yeah. So you have to look out for situations <laughs> like that, yeah, but um. <laughs> There are times when I tell people to just run, but there are times when people are buying properties that are living overseas mm -hmm. that they're not looking at. As in, they have not seen the property, or they have just gotten a few pictures. What are your thoughts on that? Um, should those overseas really be buying property that they have not seen? All right, um, honestly, I know people have done that mm -hmm. and you, you know circumstances happen we had COVID people were still buying property if it is possible uh, try as much uh, tr try as hard as possible to come and look all right and get, and, and get exactly and get get a lawyer get a, a, a licensed realtor get a licensed uh, attorney to do this for you all right so if you if you cannot do it then get people, professionals that you trust. Ajawi has been in the market, he does yeah, this, so the, you know. The drone surveys. The drone surveys. Yeah. So a good thing with technology, you can, you can be able to see the things, but I think the thing though is to deal with people who you can trust to do this mm -hmm. on your behalf. So how, how would you, in such a situation, do you, do you yourself go to the property as the lawyer or is it that well, you're, you, you have two caps, anyway. I have two caps. So as a realtor, yes. you would go to the property and... We go to the property, well. we take pictures, take videos, you know, okay. take, do, do a Zoom call. While you're on the property? Yeah, you can do that. You can do a WhatsApp call, all mm -hmm. right. I have one currently uh, in St. Anne, and for this one, I am uh, the attorney. It, the property has just, they have just completed it, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go and do the inspection and do a video call with her and go through and make sure that everything is okay. So well, that, you know. One, one thing that we have done is actually we do a 360 video oh, okay. for people so that yeah. they can actually see themselves, see okay. themselves and spin around and look. Even okay. better. Yeah, so exactly. The, the moral in the story is get a lawyer, but also try as much as possible to inject technology in it because exactly. at the end of the day, the more information you have, the better decisions you can make. Right? Okay. Okay. So, I'm gonna give you the floor now. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you to tell them your contact number. Okay. This is the first episode. This is the first conversation. We're just warming up. So, you'll see other people. You'll see us together. You'll see other um, people with you. And I'm, I'm missing. So. Okay. okay <laughs> so okay. it's it's a conversation that we want to have. Again, guys, it's ten episodes. So look out for the next episode. So over to you. All right. Um, my name again mm -hmm. is Christabel Musazi. I can be reached on four six two zero triple one. My email is cm at christabellaw dot com. So 
don't hesitate to call me, all right? <laughs> and I'm gonna put all of that information in the description box. Okay. And as I say, this is not the only episode that we're going to have together. We're trying to pull a set of people together to answer the questions that you have. So if there are questions that you have, leave them in the comment section and we will answer them, all right? Okay. All right, so, thank you so much. I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs>